how you doing is the best one, eh? I am back again, you good buddy Bruce. And today, I have the, what I would like to call the finished product for the Reckless Farron installed with the shield also installed. And I will insert a little bit of a clip where you can see me uh, installing the shield. Although after installing it this time, I did take it out. I basically had to loosen up the screws here, here, and here. Basically all of these screws I had to loosen up. All of them down here, I had to loosen them all up and then uh, finagle it in there. Try and be careful not to crack it and get it in there. And then tighten everything up little by little. Uh, these screws, I actually don't tighten them up too much, but I tightened them up a little. I tightened them up a little bit, just to where it was firm, and I think right about at the borderline of where I'd want to have them. Uh, as far as the paint, I didn't end up wet, wet sanding it or anything like that. So I do have some um, some orange peel there, and it was just one of those things where I just said, you know what? Like most of you guys said in the comments, I just decided to kind of just leave it alone because I felt like if I were to wet sand it, there's a chance that I would burn through the clear coat that I have on here and I will stand a chance of having to have to try and what, order more paint or something like that. So I said, you know what? Is it, it 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 doesn't bother me that much and i would just leave it be as it is if 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 for some reason it does happen to get chipped or anything of the sort then what i'll end up doing is i'll just take it to my to my friend that has a body shop and i'll let him touch it up for me um i didn't want i didn't want to right off the bat just come out and make a video right after installing it i figured you know what let me ride it for a little bit and see what it's like i didn't really clean this very good but i was like let me ride it for a little bit uh commute to work a little and see just how just how it is or, or what it's like with this uh reckless farin and I, I had a few things that, that i took note of and also uh one purchase that i did make that i'm gonna change and we'll get to that change a little later in the video as i look at my list and i guess we will start off with uh let's start off with the good the good thing that i've noticed with this reckless farin in comparison to the stock v star 1300 deluxe farin okay um or maybe I shouldn't say a comparison, but some things may be a contrast in comparison. One will be the air that comes underneath the fairing here, and we will talk about that. But right now, let's start off with the good. Uh, first thing that I have here on my list, uh, these little rubber, these little rubber uh, grommet things here, and I'll give you a closer look in, uh, uh, of that in a few minutes. Those little rubber things, they, they keep working their way off especially like right in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a glue stick and dab a little glue in there and then push that back on and that should take care of that all right so the other thing that i noticed uh is buffeting from the shield right here is pretty excessive from this shield i'm getting a lot of buffeting and what i notice it from is where i'm notice that I'm getting the buffet in it's pretty much right at the top of my helmet all right now I'll give you a side profile of what this uh, shield looks like from the side or how it, or what it's you know exactly how it's angled I should say and at least that way you will kind of get an idea of where the wind is coming from but as of right now the wind comes it's pretty much hitting right at the top of my helmet and it's not bad but for some reason it seems like some days it's a little bit more uh intrusive than other days where there's some days where you really don't notice it and then there's some days where um it just seems a bit much i'm also looking at a higher shield and i did actually order 
a higher shield, a taller shield, I should say, from um, um, uh, Freedom Shields. Okay, so as I was saying, um, I'm getting a lot of buffeting from right over here. And I put, what I'll do is sometimes I'll put like two fingers right here and I notice it pretty much goes away. Um, you put your whole hand up there, it's, it's just smooth. You can hear the valves of the motor or whatever the heck it is that you end up hearing the pistons. I don't know, but it's, it's just pretty smooth. Um, so from Freedom Shields, I ordered, this is a 10 inch shield again, right? So I ordered an 11. So I'm going to go up an inch, but they also have this recurve, which is supposed to uh, act like a taller shield and deflect air a little bit higher up and over your helmet. So I ordered that, but because of the whole COVID ordeal, we're about a month out from that. So, but it's not horrible. Um, like I said, I, you know, I could, I still ride. I did about 500 miles this week alone, just commuting to work. Again, it, it's not horrible. I don't know what the shorter shield would be like. I could imagine it'd probably just be that much nastier, nastier amount of air going just right into your face. You just imagine that that's even shorter. It's like half of this. So like here, so that air would just be right in, I don't know. I just, I just couldn't see that being a smooth ride. Um, yeah, so that's the only thing with the shield. You know, um, of course, I can always sell these two shields, maybe keep the short one, I don't know, or just throw them in a corner somewhere just in case for one day, who, who knows, or sell them with it for whatever reason. So, yeah, I figure that will address that issue. Um, all right, so we can move on from here because I really don't have much else um, really bad to say about this Farron. Uh, I mean, you guys know about the mount gaps. The gaps at the mount. You know about that already. That we've talked about. Um, I'm pretty much past that at this point. But other than that, it's actually pretty smooth. So we can move on to the goods. So the goods, that, the good things that I've noticed is I don't need fork lowers anymore. My other Farron, I had fork lowers, which were little fork attachments that you put onto the discs down here not the discs excuse me the forks the, yeah you put them on a disc go ahead um you put them on the forks here and what they would do is they would help block that air that comes underneath your fairing and goes over the tank and this this gives you the bobblehead effect and i don't get that with this fairing at all you know which is kind of weird but kind of cool and i'm actually happy to know that i don't have to go out and buy um, or look for because I actually was going to for lowers. I don't have to. There's no need You know, that's pretty much uh, Said and done and, and and good, you know, that's great. I love that And it, it, I put my hand down here usually that's what I used to do before I would put my hand down here and You could feel the air rushing up underneath from that fairing because around here it was a little further in so the air would just come in come up over the tank and kind of would just hit your helmet and give you the joggles and it didn't really matter how tall your shield was the shield the, the deluxe fairing I believe sits up a little bit higher because the bottom of that fairing mounts to the handlebars so that fairing sits up a little higher this one sits a little lower and I think that's what really contributes to that all right guys so here we are and we're at the radio now we're gonna talk a little bit about the audio and how it sounds. So I've, I've like I said, I've done about four or 500 miles just commuting back and forth to work. And I've been using this radio. <laughs> There's been a couple of times, like maybe I get into the twisty sections and maybe then you know, I don't really wanna play it or I don't wanna, maybe I might not wanna hear the music or whatever the case may be or I'll turn it down. Um, the buttons, are very small as you can see so after a while you do kind of 
get the gist of just using one of your fingers to tap or whatever the case may be or just to gently scroll this with you you can just use a finger and just scroll this and it'll turn down or turn up whatever the case may be you know what I mean which which is nice and that helps because it's kind of hard to look at the road and reach up there to turn something um, this radio comes with uh, Kenwood app or, or supposed to be compatible with the Kenwood app that app never works which sucks um, other than that the radio is great the XM works pretty good I can't complain I do lose signal at times I did mount the antenna right up here in the front above the headlight um, so really that shouldn't be an issue but for some reason if you like sometimes I notice just going over where going underneath a cover of trees um, under an overpass I'll lose signal same thing used to happen on the deluxe with the XM on that one in a GPS it, it, you just lose signal for some reason why I have no idea um, I love the tint that the, the, the uh, they have a timed dim feature where you can dim the audio via say it by a time you can have it turn on at nine o'clock and turn off at six which coincidentally are pretty much the hours that I have it set for and uh, yeah I think that that's great so I love that so you know that way at nighttime I write at night a lot and um, that way you don't have a bright old light just shining right in your face uh, the EQ settings I found that they hold even when I disconnect the little power cord that's right down in here that you you can't see but even when I disconnect that power cord, my EQ settings, they hold, or they're still there when I come back to it. And that, um, I'm actually pretty happy about because, let's just face it, you never remember your EQ settings. You can only get somewhat close. I haven't played with them again. I played with them once before when I was doing an audio test, but um, I never did get a chance to play with them again, so. All right, so let's do an audio test. So I'll turn it on and I'll start playing. I might have, I think I'm gonna change the audio color because with the GoPro, I'm about an arm's length right now from it. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that color. So let's change that color to orange. So let's turn it on, all right, and it starts up it has this little Kenwood thing and you got to show you it's gonna say Bluetooth connected it's gonna cardio it's gonna connect to the uh, the radio the, the cell phone excuse me all right so we're just gonna change the color because I'm not sure if right now I'm in light blue we're gonna go to um, yellow green maybe I like to think that a red would show up a little better, but let's try that yellow green. All right. So we'll go back to that. Let's hit that for a back button. All right. Um, let me open the file. Now, this is all music from the Creator uh, Studio. And then after this, we're gonna take a little ride and I'll let you guys get an idea for what it sounds like while we're riding. But there's gonna be a little caveat with that because I usually wear earplugs and right now it's gonna be playing through the mic. So let's hope for the best. Anyway, so here we go. We can try this. This is a YouTube song. It's all instrumentals, there's no singing to it. So that, that part of it will probably be missing. just with me I, I put the volume up all the way into the red on the on the phone um, here's another one this is 
a little bit more of a string string instrument. I think it's pretty good you know for not using an amp and just using just audio just uh radio power i'm actually uh, i would say i'm pretty impressed careful or actually it's the next one up there there's always some diesel to make your day so you heard that one let's go to this one soul searching again these are uh creator studio audio files so you know they're not really anything uh really crazy or anything of the sort you do have to turn the volume up about 60 GPS will say 65 but we're doing about 60 here and you can turn it up a little more and again I don't know if it'll be easy for you to hear but uh, for me it's not so bad okay like I can actually hear it get in front of this truck here all right here we go Woo! Uh, 75 right now and that's max volume okay I'll open it up a little bit for you that's max volume at, uh, I was I was at 70 now I'm at 75 no, I wasn't 75 now I'm at 70 down a little bit. We'll get in front of this guy here. Alright. Put my sunshade down. Uh, at about 780 80 right now. We'll cruise out. We're gonna cruise out to the next exit. We're at uh, 70 right now, so we'll cruise like this. I'm a little close to this car, but uh, I just want to hold the speed, so we'll do that until the next exit. Anyway, as I said before, um, I'm pretty happy with this radio, with this setup. We're going to do the strings now so you can hear them. And of course, this is max volume. Usually what I end up doing is I end up turning it down a little bit. When I stop. Thank you. 
So there you go. That's what it sounds like on a highway. At a few variable speeds. Again, I rarely, I rarely travel at, you know, uh, 80, 85 miles an hour. Most of the times, most of the times, it's, uh, many of the times, it's about 65, somewhere in that area, 65, 70, even on my road trips. I'm in that area, 65, 70, and I just kind of cruise along. All right, so I do hope that that gives you all an idea for the sound of this audio system set up. Uh, I do thank you guys for following along and watching all these videos that I've been posting up. These grips are really sticky without gloves. <laughs> They're heating grips. I rarely ride without gloves though, just FYI. I'm gonna turn on a back road here in a little bit. checking out the video I thank you guys for all of the comments and the suggestions and many of you who have offered your time to help by leaving your comments and suggestions and following along the way and as I've said before, I know some things with it aren't perfect, but I've got to be honest with you, I'm really happy with how it came out. So, yeah, this is uh, my horn works. Okay, good. And yeah, I've been enjoying it. So once that Freedom Shields shield comes in, I will definitely let you all know. And we can get that put on. We'll try and get that into a video as best as I can. And we'll get that up and uploaded for y'all. That way you can see. So, until next time, as always, I thank you guys for following along and watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Best one, A out.